All right, what I'd like to show you here is a little bit of bandsaw safety. One of the things that I uh, do quite a few of is cutting out blanks. This is a, a mouse blank for the Peking mouse. It's a very difficult blank to cut out. It doesn't have much wood to it, but it's, uh, it's very tricky. Uh, the first thing I did was on a, a piece of wood of the right size, which was like one and a half by two by five, I drew on the pattern and I cut out the side view. You have to decide whether the side or the top would be the more difficult one, and in this case, it's much easier if I go ahead and, and cut out the side view first. I actually cut out this part here using the ripping blade on my larger bandsaw and made a stop so that they all stopped at the same place because I was cutting out a whole bunch of these at once. After that, I put it back together with double-sided sticky tape, really good quality stuff, and draw on the top pattern. Make sure that the top and side patterns line up where they stop and end. If they're offset a little bit, you can be in deep trouble. Uh, you wouldn't be able to carve out your, your little mouse. Now the dangerous part of the bandsaw is, is right in here, about oh two three inches away from the front and partly to the sides of the bandsaw. But, but primarily it's right in front of the bandsaw. I like to think of there being a little pie-shaped area here and your finger should never go any closer to the bandsaw blade than this. Good news is you can put your fingers here and there's not going to be any danger. You can put your fingers here all you want. There's not going to be any danger. The main danger is here and especially as you come through when you finish cutting something off that's when the momentum of the forward push of your fingers can bring it into the blade. That's a bad thing. Don't do that. Now I'm going to try and keep my fingers as far away from the blade as possible and one of the things I'm going to be using for that is this magic push stick. Uh, just a piece of scrap pine will do fine. And it, its angle happens to be the off cut of something that I was cutting, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. And I've just kept it ever since. And I said, well, Donna, but look at that. That poor thing, it's, it's all messed up. Look at that. It's got all kinds of cuts and, and grooves. And, and that's the good news. That's really the good news. Because... I've got two of them, and this one here is especially good because somehow it managed to get this little cut right in the, in the middle of it, and, and that makes it perfect. The reason is because I can use it with that corner as a pusher to get around the corner to keep my fingers real far away, and this is what's going to be doing the manipulating for me. I have just as much uh, control with this as I would have with this and obviously I wouldn't want to do this uh, obviously you just you just don't want to put your hand especially when you're coming to the end of something where you could just drag right into the blade okay notice that I don't have the blade too far above the piece about a quarter inch three-eighths of an inch would be, would be fine also I have to think about where is the safest way to cut it and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to cut the tail first over here because that gives me a good block to hold on to here and a good block to hold on to here. And I may very well do the other side of that tail at the same time. Then I can turn it around and that would allow me to cut this with some degree of safety. One of the things you're going to see me do too, when I feel that I'm getting anywhere close to any kind of danger, I'm going to put this block here. By putting it here, it holds the, the uh, block together, the blank together, but I'm also securing it at both ends and, you know, cutting in the middle. This would be to cut over here. When I've got this block to support it, I can go ahead and cut on the line and it's not going to be something where if I were going like this, just, just think about it, okay? I'm coming like this and it comes out of the wood. Owie, that would not be a good thing.
Okay, a little bit of help from my tools here. Be sure to take off the tape. It's really good tape. And there you have a, a nice little mouse blank. And when you're, when you're paying for a mouse blank, you're not paying for the wood. It's probably one dollar's worth of wood, but a good 15 minutes worth of uh, time and effort.